Coming up on Mountain News this morning, one Eastern Kentucky family waits five years for justice after a car crash took the life of a loved one. And a partnership in one Eastern Kentucky city hosts a special event to support those served to protect our country. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News This Morning. Good morning to you. I'm Dakota Makeris. Thanks for waking up with us this morning. Let's take it over to Brandon this morning at 531. We are busy this morning, so let's take it over to Brandon. Exactly. Brandon. Let's get you right into it this morning. We're tracking a little bit of fog in some locations, so we're keeping an eye on that. Be careful as you head out the door this morning. Let's take a look at that map, and you'll see near the I-64 corridor down to three miles there. Moorhead, not as bad down toward Williamsburg and Harlem, but again, patchy, dense fog trying to form, so kind of keep an eye on that. Mountain Parkway near the Wolf Powell County line. A few uh, clouds up there this morning, but nothing too major right now. Temperatures are very mild and muggy out there. 75 Prestonsburg and in uh, J uh, Jackson there this morning. And then you see 62 in Clinton with a lot of upper 60s and low to mid 70s out there this morning. Not only across our region, but across the state. 72 in Cincinnati, 81 in Louisville right now. 77 Bowling Green, 73 in Paducah, but 65 in the Tri-Cities. Weather app forecast, we are going to be looking at the better chances for clouds and showers and storms as we head deeper in the day. But again, still going to warm back up. Not as hot as yesterday. 92 at the London Corporate Airport, 90 at the National Weather Service Office at Jackson. 88 is the forecast high, though, this afternoon. Dakota. All right, Brendan, thank you. At least one person is dead following an intense officer-involved shooting situation in Floyd County. Floyd County Sheriff John Hunt says officers were serving a court-issued warrant involving a domestic violence situation in the Allen community Thursday evening when the suspect began shooting at them before barricading himself in a building, injuring multiple officers in the process. Departments from across our region responded to the scene. Kentucky State Police Post 9 in Pikeville uh, received a call for an officer insist uh, for a shots fired complaint. Uh, they responded out here. That situation turned into an active shooter. The Kentucky State Police Critical Incident Response Team is leading the investigation along with Post 13 here in Hazard. We will update this story as more information becomes available. The Hinkle family in Floyd County waited five years for the sentencing of 22-year-old Kyle Collins. Collins was the suspect believed to have hit and killed 60-year-old Larry Hinkle with his car. Our Chandler Wilcox details how the family fought for justice. A man loved by his family. He was always part of me. I've never lost a child until I lost him. And now the Hinkle family feels a little sense of closure after Kyle Collins, who was driving the vehicle that hit and killed him, was sentenced. But waiting five years was painful. When your father's killed, then it takes a year to start to get the answers and to go from a code case to the final sentencing today, it's, it's a big closure. Kyle Collins offered an apology for the accident, but the family says waiting five years to apologize is too long. No, this, you know, he can say what he wants, but it, it was for show. It wasn't a sincere apology. It, I, he's sorry that he got caught. If he wouldn't have been caught, I would have got no apology. And the family hopes Collins learns from his mistake. And this is all a bad decision after an accident, and there's repercussions to your actions. Jody says the family hopes nobody else has to wait five more years for justice. In Floyd County, Chandler Wilcox, WYMT Mountain News. Well, since Collins has almost two years of credit for time served, he'll just have to serve two months before he's considered for parole. Well, questions are being raised in Clay County after an important part of a roadside veterans memorial was stolen. Glenn Stanfield died in a car crash on the Hal Rogers Parkway in 2004. He and others were on their way to training in Barberville when a Humvee collided with the, he was in, collided with the tractor trailer. He would later be posthumously promoted to sergeant. The people who maintain his memorial say they just can't understand why someone would steal American flags from a memorial. I don't know, just soreness. They probably saved them for a pill or something, I don't know. Gay says he has secured the flag better this time, which he hopes will be a, a deterrent in trying to steal it again. Well, one Pikeville veteran is working on a project to zip into something specific, and his daughter is lending a hand. Our buddy Forbes has more about a class that is all about providing for people with prosthetics. 
This was born out of necessity. Sewing and snipping to serve the community. A lot of teenagers can't really say, I've sewed some zippers into pants to help someone access their prosthetic device easier. And it feels pretty cool. A dad and daughter duo hoping to help mend something to make a difference. There's a great need for this with all the amputees that are coming back. And on the civilian side. Veteran Darren Hilton started altering his jeans to help with access to a leg brace he now wears, adding zippers to make it easier and more comfortable. I've never thought about this before my dad got his brace. At first I thought it was a little strange, but then it was like, oh, this is good. This will be good for many people. That, paired with an interest in learning from Emma and her dad's desire to teach, a new project started stitching itself together. I'm wanting to show the community, uh, community members and veterans, that you know, there's resolutions to problems. A program to teach something they believe could serve an entire community, often forgotten, from amputees to those who rely on assistive devices. A friend of mine, he was telling me of some guys that he knows that wear shorts year round. Um, and he told them that I put zippers in jeans. They had never thought of that. I've talked to seamstress that have never thought of that. Creating access and awareness. It doesn't have to be like these big donations. You could just sew some zippers into some pants. With some seamless solutions. In Pikeville, Buddy Forbes, WIMT Mountain News. Hilton says he is open to teach anyone who would like to learn how to alter jeans or pants for someone in need. He says those classes will be taught at Pikeville's VFW Post location. A partnership in Pikeville is bringing in the show to support those who served. Kentucky State Police, the Appalachian Wireless Arena, and the City of Pikeville are co-hosting a cruise in today to bring some muscle and speed to Main Street. The cruise, in which invites families to the Appalachian Wireless Arena to set up cars and enjoy the show free of charge, also invites donations. All will be given to the VFW Post 3769. These men and women gave so much and sacrificed so much for our country that we were happy to jump on board and, and help out. You can go to various places around the country and their support of their veterans is non-existent. To be in a place like this where they care about not only the veterans, but what we're trying to do. Those involved say the fun is one thing, but helping local veterans help other veterans is the most important part. The cruising kicks off at 6 o'clock this evening. Well, these mountains are rich with history, especially when it comes to the arts, and one Eastern Kentucky Center is doing what it can to preserve that history, support local artists, and even give back to those in the community. Our Alyssa Williams talked with those with the Appalachian Artisan Center in Knott County to learn more. A facility dedicated to supporting arts that are deeply rooted in Appalachian history. We've lost a lot of the arts in our school system. And so this is one way to continue our culture and our, the development of our, our heritage. All while supporting artists from countless counties across the Commonwealth. Most of them use it as a uh, supplement to their other income, but it helps the uh, uh, the art to continue in our area. But the center is focused on more than just helping Kentuckians sell their art. They're also helping several locals to get back on their feet. It's very comforting just to know that you're, you're being of some help to somebody. The Appalachian Artisan Center's Luthieri School partners with the Knott County Drug Court and Hickory Hill Recovery Center to give recovering addicts an outlet in addition to other opportunities. It's what needs to be done. We need a whole lot more of this kind of, of setup all over the country, not just here in Kentucky. Instructors at the Luthieri work with those in recovery to turn wood into something that sings, also providing students the opportunity to work at the local guitar factory if they excel. You know, I've got guys that I, I helped train over here two or three years ago, and now they're over at the factory and they're, they're knocking it out. I've got, I've got great hopes for some of these folks. Those hopes are extended to students like Jessica Childers, a Luthieri student from the Knott County Drug Court who is excited to see where this journey takes her. And I actually, I'm hoping to get this job at the factory out here. That's a good opportunity that if you, put, if you apply yourself, that's a great opportunity, I guess. I didn't think that I was even capable of building a guitar. 
helping to foster an appreciation for the art that Appalachia has to offer, all while helping Appalachians pave a legacy of their own. In Knott County, Alyssa Williams, WYMT, Mountain News. The school hosts those from Hickory Hill in the drug court each week, and those with the school say it is an honor to help those in recovery create something they can be proud of. Barring any changes in plans following the events in Allen this evening, folks in Prestonsburg are gearing up for a Star City Day as well as Independence Day. The city has brought in a carnival, which started on Wednesday evening and will be open every evening until Monday at Archer Park. On Sunday, live music will begin at 6 p.m. at the park, followed by even more live music at the stage in downtown Prestonsburg on Independence Day, as well as a parade, vendors, crafts, food, and finally what officials call the second largest fireworks show in the state. You can really see them anywhere in downtown, all the way from a Walmart area, all the way, pretty much any point in downtown Prestonsburg, you get full viewing of that show. Now, we'd love to see you watch them either at Archer Park or downtown at Star City Day if you're already out and about, but really just grab a chair, bring your family, and, and enjoy the time. Johnson says at the moment plans have not been changed due to the events in Allen, but of course we'll keep you updated on our website if anything changes during the weekend. You can also find a list of other Independence Day events across our region on our website at WYMT.com. Just ahead this morning, one famous couple expects their first bundle of joy together. We'll have more on that in just a few minutes. Summer is back and that means our daily rain chances in the heat of the afternoon are returning. I'll have the forecast for the 4th of July holiday weekend in about 10 minutes.